Fantastic Journey Podcast is brought to you by Tascam and Amazon Studio. For more than 30 years, Tascam has developed products for every segment of the sound and music industry. From the high-end audio professional in a major post-production studio to the novice of hobbyists at home, Tascam is everywhere. They are a company committed to providing their customers audio and video solutions that enable breakthroughs by using sound in ways that are exciting as they are accessible, even recording the voices of the dead. You ask for a non-scripted paranormal TV show. You begged for a non-staged paranormal TV show. You begged and you pleaded, and we have listened. We present to you Season 1 of The Paranormal Journey to the Unknown. It was released October 31st, 2017. In this series, we show you what it's like behind the scenes and conducting a real paranormal investigation. Join Gavin Kelly, Paul Purcell, and their special guest to seek out the existence of life after death by going to numerous haunted locations such as jails, hospitals, battlefields, and museums, collecting compelling evidence evidence by means of video, photography, and EVPs. In this season, the crew investigates the St. Albans Sanatorium, Old South Pittsburgh Hospital, Jailhouse Pizza, and the famed Monroe House. And you can watch season one of The Paranormal Journey into the Unknown on Amazon.com right now. Season two and three will be coming soon. Your journey begins now. As you all have of the known and unknown. What do we understand? What answers are we trying to achieve? Are there answers? Tonight, we gather to find more verity. Tell us as we take the journey into the unknown. This is the Fantastic Journey Podcast with your hosts, Gavin Kelly and Paula Purcell. <laughs> Hey, 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 good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Fantastic Journey Podcast. We are coming to you live from the PGH Studios. Syndication is brought to you in part by WCGT Radio Live and Live 365. You can listen to the live broadcast via the Live 365 app for your Apple phone or your Android phone. And if you prefer to use your PC, Go to www.live365.com, search for WCGT Radio Live, and you'll be able to listen to us live. So, on with the show. Lots of strange things going on out there in the paranormal realm these days. What weird and wacky stories do you have for us tonight, Paula? Well, I've got a couple. Um... The first one is, I think it's pretty well, everybody has seen it across Facebook, across several news stations, and it just gives you that eerie vibe. What is some of your, some people are afraid of snakes. I hate snakes. (laughs) Some people are afraid of spiders. I hate spiders. (laughs) Some people are afraid of mice, rats, you name it. No, I'm not scared of those. Well, there was a man in Albany, Texas. Mm Mm-hmm. A Texas man didn't realize he had a slithering problem until under his house until one day he saw a few snakes. Oh. Professionals later removed 45 live rattlesnakes from the premises. Yikes. Under his house? Under his house. Ooh. A homeowner near Albany, Texas crawled into a crawl space under his home to see why his cable service was acting up. Oh, wow. After seeing what he thought was just a few snakes, he quickly crawled back out. But when Big Country Snake Removal arrived on March 13th, the workers soon realized it was more than just a few snakes. Was there an Ark of the Covenant somewhere there? (laughs) But when... (laughs) It it took 45... In total, 45 live rattlesnakes were removed from under the home. The company documented the harrowing removal in an 18-minute video on their Facebook page. Oh, jeez. We run into this scenario often, and people don't think it can happen to them, wrote the company on Facebook. Rattlesnakes don't care how nice your house is or what kind of car you drive. They care simply about survival. Right. Company owner Nathan Hawkins said the largest snake removal from the premises was more than five feet long. Oh, my God. (laughs) <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> this is nothing. We do this all the time, Hawkins said. Three years ago, the company removed 88 snakes from underneath a different home, and KTXS reported that in a typical year, they removed roughly 2,000 snakes. No, thank you. 
Most people get bit when people are trying to harm or harass the snake or anything like that, Hawkins says. To avoid being bitten, it's recommended that you call professionals. If you see a snake on your property... If I see a snake on my property, I'm just going to stay indoors. It's called a gun. <laughs> okay. It's called a bullet to the head. <clears throat> and uh, you have to have good marksmanship to actually shoot a snake? I can beat it with a, with a shovel. <laughs> I'll chop its head off with a shovel. Oh, Lord. But anyway, we had that, and then I had this other story. i got to see if I can pull it up. Okay. Thrift store. Has anybody heard about the thrift store warning buyers of haunted furniture? No, not really. Reports of a contagious nightmare from previous owners. Uh, a North Carolina thrift store has earned a thousand has earned a thousand dollars off a handcraft bedroom suit that may just be haunted. News outlets report Habitats for Humanity Rollins County's re- restore warned would-be customers that the previous owners reported he and his wife had continuous nightmares <laughs> while the furniture was in their bedroom. The dogs were also suspicious of the 1950s high boy chest of drawers and a canopy bed as they would not stop barking at it. The store's director of operations, Elizabeth Brady, said two regular customers were intrigued and paid full price, hmm. but didn't believe the furniture was actually haunted. Wow. As a Christian housing ministry, officials wanted to make a full disclosure to buyers that the furniture was said to be haunted. Hmm. And we haven't heard from the new customers yet to see if they've had any issues. So that's going to be a, probably a continuing story. Just Sounds waiting like to it. see what happens. Hmm. How many of you enjoyed your free ice cream today in Dairy Queen? I did, as long as it was swirled. <laughs> today is the first day of spring. We were hoping to have some warmer weather. I know some of you are floating. Some of you are still freezing. And I hope that Mother Nature decides to take her mind all and rest for a little bit. Yeah, right. <laughs> we'll see. Also, tonight is the worm moon. The super moon's out tonight. I don't know if you guys will get to be able to go out and see it. They were talking about areas across the United States to see if which place is better to be to see it and where are cloudy and pre- rainy days are ahead there was some rain in our area tonight i don't know if it will clear up in time for us to see the moon but we'll see huh. i also have on this day in history i've got two things left to cover i got on this day in history and a location that i want to talk about all right lay it on us okay on this day in 1916, Albert Einstein published his general theory of relati- relativity. Well, oh, okay. That's good to know. And also, Harriet Stowe's Uncle Tom's Cabin is published today. Huh. And the solar, on this day, we're having a super moon tonight. Yeah, right. Okay. Do you remember on March 20th in 2015 what happened? I slept since then. (laughs) A solar eclipse, an equinox, and a supermoon all occurred on the same day. Oh, okay. I don't remember that, but yeah. I slept since then. (laughs) And now for our location for the week. This is a place that is still in use, but it was interesting about a story that I found about it. it. It's called... The Bailaboo Tree. The what? The Bailaboo Tree. The Bailaboo Tree Jail in Alabama. I I wrote out the pronunciation of what it is. The Bailaboo Tree. Wow. Yeah. It, it looks okay. It doesn't look that way, but okay. Bailaboo Tree. Bailaboo Tree. Bailaboo Tree. <laughs> it, the Bailaboo Tree Jail in Bailaboo, Alabama. <laughs> Balaboo tree, Balaboo tree. <laughs> Balaboo? Balaboo, okay. <laughs> Late at night, while everyone is quiet and still, a ghostly figure can be seen leaving the cell in the middle of the jail. Oh, wow. Also, you can hear the toilet flushing, even though <laughs> no one is ever in that cell. The legend has it that the cell served as a drunk tank. And the cops hung a man there in the early 1980s. Was he drunk? 
That I don't know. I don't have a lot on it, but I did find out the jail was built in the early 1970s. Oh, okay. I don't have an exact date, but I did find out that, that much. Now, a little bit about Bila Be- <laughs> <Bilobetri>, Tree, <laughs> Alabama. It was featured in a movie. Okay, what was the movie? Forrest Gump. It My is- mom always <laughs> said... You never know what you're going to get. Life's like a box of chocolates. I screwed that up real bad. <laughs> <laughs> it is known as the sea capital of Alabama, and it is a one of the biggest shrimp ports in the area. Mm, so shrimp. you can picture out what scenes that had been filmed there. Uh, Probably the shrimp part. Yeah, you got Bubba Grump. Yep, Bubba Gump shrimp. That's the only reason why I had to go on out to Alabama to go to the Bubba Gump, Bub, blah, Bubba Gump Shrimp Restaurant. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. But also, there's a secret. What's the secret? The Black Pearl was built there. Ooh, so we get to see Captain Jack Sparrow, too? I don't know, but they used the, the, the building... The, they, the company that they hired is in that area, and they're the ones that built the Black Pearl uh, boat for the movie. The set? Yes. Oh, that's cool. Of course, uh, most of the set was built on a downstage. Well, the ship for, I guess, parts of the ships were a- was actually built, and it was built in their seaport. Huh. Cool. Because it's, cause it's a little town. is right on the Gulf of the Mexico. Yep, that's the one. Buy you la... <laughs> but... Yeah, I'll just say south of Mobile. I'm, I'm good with that. I'm, uh, I can do that. I don't sound weird trying to say it, so I'll just say south of Mobile. <laughs> yeah, it's considered the Bilo Bratry, yeah. But I, I, I wrote the pronunciation down because I didn't really want to screw this up, but I screwed it up anyway. <laughs> so is it Batre or is it Batre? I don't know, but it's according a, it's to It's a Bayou La Batre. That's I'll, what I bet you what it is. All I know is I wrote down how they pronounced it in the dictionary. <laughs> they say Batre, huh? Yeah, Batre. They I'm say pre- Bayou Batre. Because I had to write down, because I didn't, I didn't want to screw that up, but I sure enough did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. <clears throat> I'm still thinking it's Bayou La Batre. Because mm. tree would be two E's, not just... One E. T R E will be Tre. Anyway, let's see. Our special guest tonight, he has started investigating when he was 15 years old. Then he founded the Southern Souls Paranormal in 2015, created his team from the ground up while working at a fast food job joint at the time. He has investigated normal residential cases, and he has done other investigation cases involving demons and skinwalkers. That's going to be an interesting topic. Demons and skinwalkers. Mm-hmm. I've only seen most of that stuff on Ghost Adventures. I've never really seen a real skinwalker. Uh, what is very impressive, he has successfully blessed and cleansed a home for a family experiencing a demonic infestation in Alabama. Hopefully nowhere near Bayou La Batri. <laughs> During his time, he also worked closely with a holy... Nico- a nickel what? A nicoline? What's a nicoline? Nicolin. There we go. We're having fun with big words today. I think we should use a speaking spell. Catholic Church. The head of the church was an exorcist by the name of Brian... Oh, good Lord. Ochiletta. Where do you... How do you see Ochiletta? Ochiletta. <laughs> I want to say omelet, but I know that's... Omelet! There you go. That's it. <laughs> omelet. No, it looks like ululet. Oleta. O- ole. I don't know. I am talking about the founder of Southern Souls Paranormal, Dalton Jones. So let's bring him on. Maybe he can pronounce some of these words for us. Dalton, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. <laughs> so, uh... I think, I, think, I think what you're trying to pronounce is ulet. Okay. Oh, Ulet. You, you, almost, you almost got it. 
Ole! Oh, okay. <laughs> we'll call him Mr. We'll call him Mr. O. <laughs> Mr. O, there you go. Well, no, actually his name is is Brian, so oh, we'll just call him Brian. Brian. That's fine. So Yeah. All right, man. How are you doing this evening? I'm doing pretty good. How about y'all? Oh, <laughs> uh, we're having fun with big words. So other other than that, pretty <laughs> <I> good. <see. laughs> oh man. So I'm looking at your uh, biography here. It kind of did a major jump. It says that you started investigating when you were 15, and then you did you founded uh, Southern Souls Paranormal in 2015. So what happened from age 15 all the way up until you uh, founded the Southern Souls Paranormal? I mean, did you have an experience that brought you in it? Well, here, here's the thing, um, and, and this might surprise you. Um, Someone in 2015, shoot that train. I, was, I was 15 whenever I founded the group. Oh, okay. Yep. So uh, I was, it was a pretty young age to, uh, to, to do something of that caliber, but I did it, and I was, I'm not going to say that I'm very successful, but mm-hmm. I do have uh, a good bit of people that love our content mm-hmm. and that I do consider some of our good fans that we have but what actually happened was well the main thing that got me involved with the paranormal was whenever i had things that would pretty much get thrown at me while i'm asleep Mm -hmm. um and this was whenever i was living with my mother and my stepdad at the time um i had a alabama football in a plexiglass case and uh bobby's or my my sorry my stepdad um, he, uh, his, his, uh, my stepdad's stepdad was a Tennessee fan. Okay. So he hated Alabama. Ooh, um, so there was a roll tide fight, wasn't there? Yeah, there was a roll tide fight in the, the go balls fight. So, uh, okay. yeah. And, uh, when I was sleeping, that plexiglass container containing that football landed on my chest and, uh, oh. it left a pretty good size mark and it really, it, it scared me. Of course, I'm, I'm, let's see, whenever that happened, I was about 12 or 13 when that happened. Um, after that happened, I was, I, I really can't say if I was pushed off my bed or not, or maybe I just went through a spell and, you know, was rolling off my bed. I don't know. Right. Um, so I can't really consider that paranormal. Um, like I said, I could have just been rolling off my bed, but that was something that I've never done before. Mm-hmm. Um, so I've always said that, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I'll say it. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. Um, but yeah, um, it, I, like I said, I just I can't really consider that to be evidence or anything like that or anything paranormal. But like I said, I've never I've never done that before. Uh, I mean, I did it whenever I was like six, but that was like one time that I know of. And there was one of the times that I rolled off my bed, I'd actually knocked myself unconscious Ooh. and woke up on the floor the next morning. Ouch. I've only did that during an earthquake, but that was my story. I'm sticking to it. <laughs> yeah, it it happened three times for uh, it happened three times within four days. Huh? And did you do some uh, research on the property to f- find out what possibly could be causing it? Um, at that time, no, I didn't. And uh, you know, to this day, I still haven't found anything on there. Um, besides, there was somebody that had, I think, died on the neighboring property. He was a he was a drunk that uh, he used to throw bottles onto my stepdad's property um, after he'd get done drinking. But uh, other than that, um, there there was no other research that I could find. I mean, I, I went the the way I found that was just asking people. Right. Uh, asked, uh, so I asked my stepdad, and he's the one that told me about that. But um, other than that, there was nothing else that I could find. Hmm. Kind of looks like uh, the drunk guy was throwing his bottles at the house because he really liked that house and he wanted a house. So now, since he's dead, he's in the house. He took, <laughs> hey, he took it over. Be. Could be. <laughs> oh, wow. So, let's see. Uh, created your team 2015 um what was your first investigation i mean and how did it go 
Well, my first investigation was, it, it wasn't anything big. Um, it was actually an investigation at my stepbrother's house. Okay. Um, and that was in North Alabama. And uh, I didn't really get a whole lot of evidence. Um, I got a shadow, but that could be explained. Right. So I'm not going to consider the hardcore evidence. I'm a, I maintain the skeptic mindset, okay. but I am a believer if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, now, I try to disprove everything that I can. But if I can't disprove it, it's paranormal. Um, you know, anything anything that that's not normal is paranormal. So anything that can't be explained rationally is obviously paranormal. So or that that's my point of view, really. Have you, uh, since, but, since you're in Alabama, have you been down to the Sloss Furnace? Um, I've never actually been on the property, but I have been... Uh, on the same road it's on, and I have seen it. Um, I know a little bit of the history on it, mm-hmm. but uh, you know it's been a place that I've been wanting to investigate for a while. But you know their their cost is is pretty steep, so I'm just like, oh, yeah, eh, I'll wait on that. So, oh yeah. Well, the only sad thing is, is if you're trying to investigate that location, is might as well throw all your audio evidence right out the window. Because first of all, exactly. it's over there by the overpass. You got the interstate. You got the roads. So yeah, you, unless you're deep inside the Sloss furnace, I don't think you're going to be able to get diddly squat in audio. That that's true. That is true. But we actually drove up there. We were heading back. Were we were we coming back when we stopped there, or were we going somewhere? I forgot. You don't remember either. No, I don't. Damn. I'm pretty sure we were coming back from somewhere when we decided to stop at the Sloss Furnace. We wanted to go in and... Oh, we were coming back. We were coming back from Florida. Oh, okay. Yeah, we're coming back from Florida. And we stopped over there, and they're like, oh, it's closed. I'm like, really? It's a weekend. Why is it closed? So apparently they closed it. I don't know why. But we wanted to go and check it out. The weekends are open for uh, investigations. Oh, no, there was nobody there. It was just uh, the security guard. Oh, okay. It was it was it was a was a Saturday it was a Saturday or Sunday? It was a Sunday. We were coming back. It was a Sunday. We were coming back from Florida. So I'm assuming that their Sundays they might be just be closed. I don't know. Yeah. That they, they, they it's probably. I mean we still want to go ahead and go take like a, a tour of it, but yeah. investigate it? Probably not. So. Oh, believe me, I, I, I wanna investigate it, but I mean, you know, it's uh like I said, the cost is steep. Yeah. If they're only allowing you six hours in there, which is not worth really no, worth no it. Way. Yeah, yeah. We, uh, our producer went ahead and contacted uh, them to get us in there to do a, some filming for our episode for Paranormal Journey, and they were like, "Oh, you want to come in and film? All right, it'll be uh, two hundred and fifty dollars, and you have to pay to have our curator on site." And he's going to be $150 an hour. Whoa. And basically totaling everything up. Because I told him, I said, we come in at noon and we'll leave the next morning at 7. He's like, oh, well, in that case, it's going to run you... What what was it? It was like uh, 1850 or something like that? Something like that. Yeah, 1850. So... That uh, that's just way too much. Yep, and I mean for all, for a place there, you can't even get any good audio, EVPs. That yeah, uh, uh-uh. uh, no, thank you. <laughs> I mean they're they're wanting to charge. They were wanting to charge us for just doing a small investigation there for like six hundred dollars for for six hours. For yeah, for six hours for three people, and I've got more than three people on my team, and it's like an, an extra one hundred fifty dollars per person. Wow, how many people do you have in your team? I have eight. Wow. Uh, some of those are like uh, extras, backups, whenever we have somebody that, that can't appear uh, or can't make the, make the investigation. So we've got them, and then we've got a psychic medium. Ah, there you go. You want to ask him your question? What are you looking at me all funny for? <laughs> you already done forgot? Mm-hmm. Really? Yeah. How can you forget? Because I'm probably on pain pills right now. Oh. Yeah. So you're in a Demerol haze? Yeah. Well, not really a Demerol haze. But 
Oh, man. All right. Um, let's see. Usually, I always go ahead and ask if um, our guests have been pushed, tugged, tripped, slapped, scratched, bit by an unseen force while investigating. Um, well, um, it hasn't happened to me a whole lot. I have been scratched on one investigation, not the demonic investigation, but a, a different one. Okay. Um, this one, this one was also in North Alabama, but, um, it was, uh, five, no, it was four or five scratch marks, um, that went down my chest that went from my left shoulder mm-hmm. to about my third rib. Hmm. Three of them? Now, uh, it was four, I believe. Ah, it was three. It would be the mark of the Trinity. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it was, uh, it freaked me out at first, but then I'm sitting there, I'm like, well, maybe I scratched myself. Maybe I scratched myself. But then I'm like, well, I don't remember ever doing that. And these were bleeding. Yeah, you just ran into uh, a pitchfork. My... You forgot about it, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'm just sitting there, I'm thinking, well, I forgot about it. Well, Next thing I know, I'm outside, I'm getting sick, because uh, I guess I worked myself up too much, and this was this was early on, this was uh, probably my first year in the in the paranormal field, mm-hmm. and uh, that was the first time it ever happened to me. What location now, uh, was it? I'm sorry, what was that? What location was it? Um, it was in Trinity, but uh, any, any further information I really can't tell you, but... Gotcha. Uh, it was just, it was just a normal residential case that we were working. Um, they had some voices, they had some walking, some knocks, um, nothing that would make me believe that it was demonic or anything like that. And mm-hmm. Back then, we would shy away from anything demonic because you know it was it was kind of one of my fears that I would I would find something demonic and not know what to do. But um, after that, I, I started doing research and studying up on demons and and how people actually got rid of them and stuff like that. And I guess that's kind of what prepared me for um, the demonic case in North Alabama, which was about 45 minutes away from uh, the location where I was scratched. Now, the demonic case, there was two, yeah, two investigations. The first one, I was there about four hours by myself. Mm-hmm. Um, my other team members were way behind. They had some type of car trouble or something like that. And uh, I was there four hours. I knew it wasn't a good idea for me to go in there by myself, but I did it anyway. Stayed in there. Nothing really happened. Well, what freaked me out and uh, was hearing a laugh. And it wasn't an ordinary laugh. It was. It, it sent chills down my spine. I mean, it sent chills all over my body. Hmm. I mean, it, it freaked me out to the point to where I'm, like, rethinking my decision to even come here. Well... I'm about to call the homeowners because they actually rented a hotel mm-hmm. and I'm calling them up. I'm like, Hey, well, as I'm dialing their number, I see something out of the corner of my eye and I see this white apparition poke its head around the corner twice within maybe a half a second. And I'm sitting there thinking that there's actually somebody in the house okay. because it, it looked so real. I'm over there. I'm balling my fist up. I'm getting ready to to defend myself because, like I said, I, I I feel like there's somebody in the house because this is the first time I've ever heard a laugh. This was the first time that I've ever seen a full body apparition, mm-hmm. um, and this was um, about a year. Well, no, it was about yeah, about a year ago um, that this happened. And you know, you some people get lucky and they'll see uh, apparitions on every investigation. Well. Not necessarily. Mm-hmm. Not with us, it wasn't. But uh, as I'm walking out the door, and I'm about to get in my car, I get groped. Okay. That was it for me. That was it for me. <laughs> I left the location, and I went to the closest restaurant, which was McDonald's, and I sat in the lobby for about 30, 45 minutes until I got a phone call from my other investigators saying, hey, we're on our way. I'm like, well, I'll uh, I'll go back. So I go back. I'm sitting in my car. I still don't want to go back in um, by myself because I know what's there now, and I've experienced it firsthand by myself. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, well, let me walk around the house real quick and see if I can see anything because I've got a static camera uh, rolling in the master bedroom. So I call up the homeowners. I'm like, hey, 
y'all have a window on this side of the of y'all's bedroom? And they're like, yeah. So I'm going around. Well, next thing I know, a neighbor drives up in the uh, next door. And I'm like, oh, my goodness. There's They're probably about to call the cops on me because there's some unknown person in the neighbor's yard walking around. Mm-hmm. I'm sitting there like, oh, my goodness, I'm about to go to jail. Uh-oh. But uh, luckily, luckily, I didn't get the cops called on me, so I guess they knew what I was there for. Um, and I'm trying to unchain the uh, chain link fence, and a dog comes up behind me, sticks his head uh, right, right on the right side of me, and scares the shit out of me. I'm sitting there. I'm I'm already on the edge because I'm back at the house where this just happened, and I never fully calmed down. And it was probably a bad idea for me to even drive because I drove like two miles, but still, I'm sitting there shaking. That dog comes up to me, and I'm like, "Oh my goodness." That dog scared the hell out of me. I mean, it was absolutely, I mean, that was, I, I don't know. I was just on edge at that time. And, well, anyway, I go back there, and I'm checking the recorder well. Or my, my camera, I realize that the recording's done stopped and started over. So I'm like, well, huh, that's weird. My camera's never done that before. It was on, like, two minutes hmm. on, on recording. So turns out my camera was shut off about, an hour and a half in, and then it come back on. Or actually, it was about an hour and it's somewhere between an hour and a half and an hour and thirty five minutes that it shut off mm-hmm. and started recording again. So, I, I've I've never had that happen. You know, maybe it was just one of the little things that you know it could be explained, but I don't know. Hmm. But uh, you know, I, I like I said, I'm a skeptic. You know. I, I maintain that skeptic mindset, um, but I just couldn't explain that. All right. Well, um, <clears throat> I'm going to have you explain something to uh, all of our listeners. Um, how can you tell something is considered demonic when – from what I've heard, from my standpoint, that it is a, a malevolent, underrested spirit. I mean, how how do you differentiate, you know, a malevolent spirit to a demonic spirit? Well, a, a, a malevolent spirit may sometimes or, or occasionally um, pretend to be demonic. I've had that happen where they do the three knocks, and you know they 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 do all that. But the only thing and the 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 bit of research that I've done, they don't ever put off a foul smell. Now that's what the research I've done. Now I may be wrong, but you know, mm-hmm. the 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 case in the case in North Alabama, the the demonic case, mm-hmm. it had all the signs, knocks and threes. It had the uh, sulfuric smell, the smell of rotten eggs. Okay. It had, it, I mean, it, it attacked the homeowners, like physically. One of the homeowners had uh, three scratches across his, it was either his neck or his cheek. I'm thinking it was his neck, or no, it was on his jawline. Hmm. Um, and and that was, that was whenever I knew that I was dealing with something a little bit more um, than just a, a normal case. And they told me to begin with that, you know, this is something that, um, it, it's not good. You know, they, they thought it was demonic. Well, I've had people be like, well, hey, this is demonic. Well, no, it's not. Um, mm-hmm. You know, so I, I'm going in and I'm, I'm thinking, well, they're just probably kind of scared and, and stuff like that. But whenever I experience it firsthand, that's when I know right. that uh, what they were telling me was, was true. And, you know, at first it, it kind of it shook me. Like I said earlier, I mean, I was on edge second investigation i was more prepared and i knew what i was dealing with um and and during that time i don't think i got scared one bit because i knew what i was going to do i knew how i was going to do it and i held my confidence high Mm -hmm. and you know the the thing with demonic cases if you don't have that confidence if you don't have that um you know hey i'm going to do this and i'm going to do it right or um you know you're kind of iffy on something Mm -hmm. that demon attack that and he's gonna hold that and and use it against you he's gonna use your fears against you is pretty 
pretty much what I'm saying. Right. right. If you think that, if you think that this demon is going to lash out at you and attack you, then it probably will. Um, you know, it's gonna it's gonna do anything to shake. You. Um, whenever I did the blessing, there was a growl that came through, mm-hmm. and uh, I knew I, I, with all the research I've done, you don't show fear. Well, mm-hmm. I didn't show fear, and uh, I I did the blessing. I finished it, and I was let's see, I was in the dining room whenever I did the blessing, and I was pretty much saying bless bless the food that enters our bodies and uh, gives us sustenance. And at that time, that's whenever the growl came through. Mm-hmm. Um, we all heard it. Um, my medium was actually the one channeling, and uh, that's where the growl came from. And you know, during this time, there was a very he- there's there there's a lot of heaviness in on the location or in the house. Right. We all felt it. After the blessing, we uh, we missed the room. Ooh. We uh, we were talking to uh, one of the family members that had passed on through the PSB 11, and they said, help me. Mm-hmm. Well, that been chills down my spine. And then on the EVP, we got, I'm not leaving. Hmm. Well, then me and my medium realized that, hey, we missed a room. So we blessed that room. We, we, it was a closet actually, so we bless it. We put the cross on the door. We say a prayer, everything like that. Mm-hmm. Did the normal blessing. Well, after that, everything's good. The heaviness lifts. I mean, it was something that I never experienced before. I don't think I've ever experienced a true demon mm-hmm. in my life. And that's something that I'm never going to forget is how that heaviness lifted away and how the homeowners felt different even even the animals in the home acted different they were much happier i went back and saw for myself how the animals acted and there was no doubt in my mind that i helped these people hmm. after that they uh they came to me and they're like hey you know we're so thankful for for what you did for us and you know we want to help people like you helped us and you know, we we know that we can you know, kind of talk to these people that are experiencing these things and, and kind of get them to to understand how serious it can be. And luckily, their case wasn't um, extremely bad. Um, it, it wasn't even in um, oppression stage. At first, I thought it was. At first, I thought it was, but it wasn't. Um, I, d- I did a little more research and found out that it was just infestation. That's why it was so easy for us to get it out. Um even then, you know, it was still difficult. I still had to fast. I still had to keep up on my prayers and had to get really close to God right. um, in order to do this. And it's through the power of God that we were able to, to get rid of this thing. It wasn't me. It wasn't my team. It wasn't my colleague, Jessica. It wasn't the medium. It was God that did this. Mm-hmm. You know, he went through me to, to get rid of this thing. So... You know, I, I I can't take all the credit. Right. You know, I've got to give some. I've got to give some of the credit to the one up above, the one upstairs, um, because without him, I couldn't have done it. Yep. Fist bump to the big man. Absolutely. So, uh, let's see. Did you find out or figure out what brought it there? Well, here's the thing. We uh, we did some research, and we found out that the property used to be owned by a slaveholder. Now, okay. slaves, they come from you know, a background where they did voodoo and black magic and stuff like that. Well, we think that, and, and this is just what we believe. You know, we don't know for sure. We're never going to know for sure right. if, if this is what actually happened. But we think that maybe that demon was summoned by one of these slaves and and was wanting to torment the the slave owner. Hmm. That's the only thing we can find that makes sense. Um, now, if that's true or not, like I said, we don't know for sure. I don't. I don't think we've ever encountered anything like. Well, I wouldn't say like that. Um, 
what we uh, actually experienced was something totally bizarre. Um, we believed that either A, we were dealing with a grim, or we were dealing with a soul eater. Now, that all yeah, sounds and... very far-fetched, but uh, something happened at a location that we went to, and we come to find out that there were these two girls that were practicing witchcraft, and we believe they conjured something, but they didn't know how to get rid of what it was, and it actually stayed in the location. And whatever this thing was, it was actually biting people, running up on them, pushing them into corners, tripping them, scratching them, choking them. And we went up there to go film for the Paranormal Journey uh, just our first time there. We've never been there before. And my camera guy was filming us. And next thing you know, he I could see his face kind of changed. And he said, dude, I got to get out of here. He dropped the camera and left. He was out in the parking lot sprawled out in the parking lot ground he said i've never experienced anything like that i go what happened he's like well it felt like someone reached through the wall reached through my chest and just started pulling my life away he goes i was watching my la my life flash before my eyes and he said i just had to get out of there and he went outside to regain his composure and he sat up and that's when he told us what the heck happened well, <clears throat> I wound up confining with a buddy of mine as a pagan priest, and he told me what it is. And then he also told me, he goes, well, one thing you need to look out for is uh, there is a um, a vortex there. I said, a, a what? He goes, um, portal. He goes, there's a portal at that location that they're coming in and out of. So now he's really freaking me out. I mean, first of all, we're dealing with a Grim, and I got attacked when I was there. Um, I didn't know about this vortex, and it just kind of validated when he told me, because the night before, I passed out on the table. It was about 4.30 in the morning, and when I woke up at a little after 6, my equilibrium was completely off. I couldn't walk. I was dizzy. The room was not spinning, but I was. Paula had to like walk me out of the building over to my truck and then I was okay so when I told him that he said yeah that that's the vortex that's the portal you were right there whenever there's anybody next to a portal you basically you lose your equilibrium you get off kilter you're off balance and everything it's just something with the the energy and and the environment changes and you're smack dab in the middle of it so I got to experience yep. that but when we were leaving, after everything was cool, we, we were getting smudged. We came up with the idea, we're going to go ahead and smudge ourselves with the uh, sage. Well, my camera guy's smudging me, and I'm like, dude, my fingertips are tingling. And he's like, just calm down. we got to get this done so we can get the hell out of here. Well, after he got done, I looked at my fingertips, and they were bleeding. And I'm like, what in the hell? Why are my fingers bleeding? So I walk on outside, and, and I go, Paula, look, my fingers are bleeding. She goes your fingers look at your face and i'm like what do you mean look at my face I had to go around the side of the building to the bathroom and go look i had claw marks on my face so yeah got attacked there and after we confided with my friend at the pagan priest he told me what it possibly is or what it is and how we're going to go about to get rid of it and believe me, we didn't know what the heck we were walking into. I mean, I've never experienced anything like that before. There was no sulfur smell. There was none of that stuff. I mean, there was really nothing to give me the inclination that it was a demonic presence. We're just thinking it's something otherworldly or something like that. But when we went back, we actually got five-inch sockets thrown at us. They were deep weld sockets. Uh, we had an investigator get punched in the stomach, had her head slammed against the uh, workbench. It was just totally nuts. But what we did is we found, this, you're going to probably laugh at this. Everybody that I tell this to, they, they look at me and go, yeah, right. You watch TV too much. But we found two hex bags. We found uh, a, uh, what was it, a foot locker. Foot locker, right? Yes. 
Okay. Well, the Foot Locker that had a, a period dress in it, and then we found a vase with some weird, I mean, we're talking weird writing on it. And once we removed all that stuff, the location calmed down. So we're thinking that when we got rid of all that stuff, I mean, yeah, I took a lot of backlash on it, but we destroyed all the stuff. We burned the hex bags mm. and everything. And believe me, it, it took over 30 minutes for the stuff to burn because it would not burn. And then finally it started burning. We heard like a loud hiss or a cry or something, and then it started burning. Yep. So that's some I crazy mean, stuff. <laughs> people, some people don't believe in that stuff, but I mean, that's, I mean, well, I mean, you know, I don't know where I'm going with this, but <laughs> I mean, people, <laughs> people, uh, people like to judge too quickly when they don't know the full story. Right. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's not right to do that. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I'm not going to laugh at somebody because, you know, they told me that they found this stuff because, you know, that could be true. You know, I, I, I mean, I don't know the full story, but, you know, I'm not going to bash somebody because, you know, I don't believe what they're saying. They're saying what uh, they're doing isn't, um, you know, legit. I yeah. mean, you weren't there. You, you don't know the full story. I mean, I would invite anybody that, that didn't believe me and so do the homeowners I mean when that house had that demon in there mm-hmm. I would invite anybody to come in there and experience it for themselves because I know what I felt and and they know what they felt yeah well lucky for they us we had a total of basis. 12 people at that location so we had plenty of witnesses yep I mean we've got one two three, four, five, we got six um, that were there. Mm -hmm. And uh, we made the mistake of using a Ouija board at the location. Now, that was before I did all the research. But um, I had the Ouija board blessed, and uh, everything's okay now. Um, After I used the board, that's when things really started picking up. So for a temporary amount of time, I did, in a way, make it worse. But, you know... That was my own stupidity, I guess, um, and 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 I, I take I take responsibility for that. But in the end, did I make up for it? Yes, of course I did. Yeah. You know, the, the reason why I ended up doing the blessing was because I couldn't get anyone else to do it. I reached out to several churches in the Holy Nicolaitan Catholic Church, uh, the the church you were trying to pronounce earlier. Nicolaitan. Hey, I can do it. Nicolaitan. Nic- Nicolaitan. <laughs> Nicolaitan. Nicolaian Catholic Church. Um, they were in a financial situation, which luckily they're getting that fixed now. Mm-hmm. Um, so they really couldn't travel um, to uh, other states or outside of their area of service. So mm-hmm. once I found that out, I'm like, well, you know, I told these people I would get them some help. Right. I promised them I would get them some help. All that's left for me to do is to do it myself. I mean, this is something I've never done before. Did I do my research on it? You bet I did. You know, I did not want this to go bad. I did not want it to turn. I did not want it to get any worse than what it already was. Mm -hmm. And thankfully, um, by the grace of God, that it did work, and it was successful. Hmm. Well, with the Ouija board, um, I am a highly unbeliever and major skeptic of the Ouija board. Um, because it's basically the ideal motor that's controlling the Ouija board. My thing is, is if you want to use the Ouija board, blindfold yourself and have someone on the side tell you what it's saying. I guarantee it's going to be a bunch of gibberish and junk because you're not actually looking at it yourself. So I do believe that it's it's your subconscious and the ideal motor system basically making you move that. You've got one person that's thinking something weird, and you're thinking something weird, and the other person is, and you're barely touching it, and you're, and you're basically moving it. It's like your subconscious is actually fighting with the other subconsciouses to make that move around. Yep, so, and yeah. and that could be very true. And you know the way you explain it is is you know on point. Mm-hmm. I mean, I I believe that a little bit too, but I also believe there's something else to it. So, but but who who really knows? 
I mean, you know, it's a game developed by Hasbro. Right. I mean, you know, it's a freaking game. Well, here's the thing. If it, if you drew an Ouija board session and it moves by itself, then I'll be a believer. Yeah, me, me too. I mean, you know, I'm not a... I'm not a full believer in it, but being in a house that had a demon, you know, and we weren't getting any responses with any of our other equipment Mm -hmm. on the first investigation, I'm like, well, this is all we've got left. Let's try it. So we did. We got some, I wouldn't really say it's evidence. I don't ever say anything that we get with the Ouija board is evidence. Right. Um, Exactly. You know, for, for, you know, reasons that, you know, you just stated. So... Anyway, we, we got some responses, but like I said, it, it could be evidence it couldn't be, or, or could not be. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's no telling. We, we don't know for sure. I mean, we, we'll never know, but, I mean, other than that, you know, that's really all I've got to say. Yeah. That's all I've got to say about that. The only thing that I know, or I, the knowledge I have of demons is basically... Sulfur. That's the only thing that I know. If you're in a place and there's a sulfur smell and there's nothing there that can make that smell and also you got rotten eggs, then yeah, I believe that there's something evil there. But I mean, we did experience this over at the Monroe house. It was, uh, I was in the planet room and all of a sudden there was a smell of dirty diapers. And we've been in that place the whole day. And there was no smell like that. And all of a sudden, in that room, there there was a smell of dirty diapers. And the room kind of was unsettling. I tried to do a, an EVP session. I didn't get nothing. But it just went away. I mean, I don't know what the heck it was. Heck, I thought maybe Joe farted or something. I don't know. But uh, okay. <laughs> it was just there. It was, it was rotten diaper smell. And it just like walked off I'm, I'm not really sure if it was something evil and bad that wanted to do something why did it just leave <laughs> you know yeah I mean I, I agree with you and the sulfur smell was a telltale sign for me you know mm-hmm. that there was something that wasn't just a normal spirit there and uh, all the other stuff the knocks the scratches you know that could just be caused by uh, you know and an, uh, pretty much an upset or malevolent spirit. Um, yeah. But, you know, the sulfur smell, like I said, that's just a telltale sign. Yeah. If, yeah. if, if it's explainable. Now, I mean, if it's explainable, then, of course, you know, it, it, it can be debunked. Yeah. I mean, that was the only reason why I know that if, if I encounter something like that and I smell sulfur, get the salt. That's all I know. <laughs> So, you never encountered anything like that, have you, dear? No? Hmm. I know there have been some times, we really don't consider three knocks as, you know, demonic or anything like that, because there's been times when we're doing EVP sessions and we're just asking, hey, can you go ahead and, and knock? And then we'll actually get three knocks. But, I mean, of course we're sitting there saying, oh, it's, it's, it's the, the mark of the Trinity or something like that. And no, it's like just simple three knocks. We got three knocks when we were at Old South Pittsburgh Hospital when uh, we were using an EKG sound, and all of a sudden it uh, it flatlined. The next thing you know, we hear do 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 like that on a door, and we didn't even know where it was coming from. And we were, like, thinking maybe it was just a spur-of-the-moment thing. And then, of course, uh, our investigator went ahead and said, hey, if you went ahead and if did that, can you go ahead and do that again? And right on command, do 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 three knocks again. But we don't really cons- consider that to be, you know, demonic, but it's just, it's like a standard or something. I mean, if they're going to knock, they're usually going to knock maybe two or three times. Yeah. I mean, that's what we encountered. But, you know, I've never been scratched with three marks. We had an investigator that got scratched uh, just recently when we were filming over at the Octagon Hall. Three scratches right down her arm, and I tell you what, the scratch went under her watch band and right over her uh, the top of her hand. That I cannot explain, and I was sitting next to her the entire time. And next thing you know, she's like, oh, I'm feeling burning on my arm, and I went ahead and looked. There were three scratches. 
and then that one went right under her watch. That blew my mind on that. Of course, we are reading out of a book. There's a book there. Um, have you ever been to Octagon Hall? I have not, but that's on my bucket list. Oh, man, it's a great place. But there is a book that is there. It's hidden. Only, how do I put this? Uh, only the one that truly seeks it will find it. But the book basically had to deal with, this is really bizarre, it's a, it's in the shape of a Bible, but it deals with, um, what was it, medical? No. It was kind of metaphysical. Metaphysical. It, it was like religion. It was like religion, medical. Uh, and spiritual. And spiritual all in one book. It was kind of like thinking outside the box when it came to uh, alternative medicine. Yeah. And this book basically drove one of our investigators nuts. You could see that she would change. Her expressions would change. And she would just have this different likeness about her. Well, we were down in that room, and something happened where her her chair was pulled back with her in it. And she's like, whoa, did you just see that? She goes, I just got pulled back. And then after that, then she got scratched. But... Chris was reading out of the book, and we were using uh, the spirit, bo- uh, not the spirit box, the Ovulus 3, and it was giving us numbers, which is really odd. I've never seen the Ovulus 3 give me numbers, and while he was reading, it, it said 15. So he's like, okay, I'm going to look at chapter, I'm going to go to fi- 15, uh, section 15 in this book. It's kind of like the Bible, you know, you have your, what are they, scriptures, or what do they call them? Kind of, yeah. I mean, they were... You know how they have different numbers in the thing? Yeah, they had, like, different religious aspects to it, but it wasn't, like, complete religion. So, it said number 15. So, he looked through through that chapter, and he started reading 15, and the room just started tightening. And then another number came up and said 7. So, he jumped back to 7, and that's where I saw a shadow walk in the hallway. So when this thing was spitting out numbers on the ovulus, he was actually trying to pull them up in this book. And it was correlating, and our investigator is getting, you know, taken over, scratched. Um, it was just totally, totally bizarre. But we don't know what that, what's, what that book is really doing. Uh, I don't know if there is an evil stronghold on that book, but there is something there. And they quote-unquote call him the Ripper great name for a malevolent spirit (laughs) so but you need to check that place out that place is awesome the crazy stuff going on there yeah so what are the ones that you have on your bucket list besides uh octagon hall i mean you've been to waverly Um, do what have you been to waverly i have not that's on your bucket list too Um, that that is on my bucket list. Um, Waverly, Octagon Hall, and uh, the Bel Air House. Ah, yeah, Bel Air's on our list. Um, we're we've been trying to get into the Trans Allegheny Lunatic Asylum. That one's on our that's list. That's another. Yeah, that one yeah, that, is a bit yeah, pricey. That's another. Yeah, that one's a bit pricey. Especially when they want you to pay two hundred and fifty dollars extra for their insurance. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh. So But anyway, we are at, almost at the top of the hour here, so we're gonna go ahead and take uh, a break here. And uh, you are listening to us live on the Fantastic Journey podcast as we are talking with Dalton Jones, the uh Founder of Southern Souls Paranormal. So we will be right back after these messages. Allison is perfect. I mean, she'd never tell you that. She's humble and perfect. She likes everyone. She even likes her untidy roommate's weird guinea pig. Allison, wait, are you texting and driving? Allison, no. That's the exact opposite of what I was just saying about you. Why, Allison? Why? Texting and driving makes good people look 
Visit StopTechStopRex.org. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. I'm Paul George of the Indiana Pacers. When I was six, my days were spent playing basketball. When I was six, my dream was to make it to the NBA. When I was six, my mom had a stroke. So I want you to learn to spot a stroke fast. F-A-S-T. F, face drooping. A, arm weakness. S, speech difficulty. T, time to call 911. I'm Paul George. Spot a stroke fast. Visit strokeassociation.org. Brought to you by the American Stroke Association and the Ad Council. My name is Lola Silvestri, and I'm going to be 95 this year. I was very independent. I fell, and I had to have meals on wheels. America, let's do lunch. One in six seniors faces the threat of hunger, and millions more live in isolation. Drop off a hot meal and say a quick hello. Volunteer for Meals on Wheels by donating your lunch break at americaletsdolunch.org. This message brought to you by Meals on Wheels America and the Ad Council. The storks are bringing me a baby brother! We can do this together! All right, let's go! Storks know how to keep kids safe. Do you? What? Oh my gosh, you don't know! <gasps> I know! You don't! <laughs> Oh, man, you laugh when you're uncomfortable. No. Making sure your child is in the right car seat is one of the steps to safer travel. I will rock this. You will rock this. To know for sure that your child is in the right car seat for their age and size, visit safercar.gov slash the right seat. Cool, cool, cool. Very cool, very cool. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. It's important to plan ahead for emergencies, like Like the the storm. storm. When, when it, it kicked, kicked in, in, we had we a were plan. Separated. We, we were, were able to get in touch with each other in no, no time. Idea how to find each other. The, the whole, whole experience, experience was, was the most frightening ten hours of my life. If, if there's, there's one piece of advice I'd offer other moms, moms out there, there, it's to stay it's calm and keep to the plan. Message. Some parents plan ahead. Some don't. Make sure you know where to find your family in an emergency. Start your plan at ready.gov. Brought to you by FEMA and the Ed. Welcome to Calvin's Barbershop. You all got to see this. I don't even want to know what you're looking at on that phone. Well, you should. I was learning about the dangers of high blood pressure and that we need to get ours checked regularly. High blood pressure can increase the risk of heart attack or stroke. But this text program can help keep it at a healthy range. Just text Barbershop to 97779 to sign up. I'll get right on it. As soon as I'm done with this baby pants. Video. <laughs> Text Barbershop to 97779. A message from the American Heart Association and the Maybe hard to believe, but people just like you are already saving money. FeedThePig.org makes it easy. Their simple savings plan teaches you how to start saving without going overboard. So you don't need to start foraging wild berries. I was skeptical, but these are actually pretty good. You don't need to sell your soul to the devil. Fifteen bucks is the best I can do. You just need FeedThePig.org. Don't get left behind. Get tips and tools at FeedThePig.org. Brought to you by the American Institute of CPAs and the Ad Council. Welcome to Calvin's Barbershop. You all got to see this. I don't even want to know what you're looking at on that phone. Well, you should. I was learning about the dangers of high blood pressure and that we need to get ours checked regularly. High blood pressure can increase the risk of heart attack or stroke. But this text program can help keep it at a healthy range. Just text Barbershop to 97779 to sign up. I'll get right on it as soon as I'm done with this baby panda video. (laughs) Text Barbershop to 97779. A message from the American Heart Association and the Ad Council. This is Mario Andretti. You know me as a race car driver, but I'm also a Meals on Wheels volunteer. I've raced against the sport's biggest personalities, but I've never met more vibrant, amazing people than the seniors served by Meals on Wheels. You can make a difference by dropping off a hot meal and saying a quick hello. So, America, let's do lunch. Volunteer your lunch break at americaletsdolunch.org. This message brought to you by Meals on Wheels America and the Ad Council. People been saying to your friend, get a different face. And posting on their feed, they're super ugly. The things they say to them online are cruel and they're not true. So tell your friend, I'll stand up for you. Don't worry, I know what to do. Know someone being bullied online? You can be a witness and make a difference by letting the world know it isn't cool. And by letting your friend know you care. Learn more at eyewitnessbullying.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council. I'm leaving. Uncontrolled high blood pressure is serious, and I can quit whenever I want. Why can't we get back to when you checked on me? I don't want to leave. But remember, when I quit, you quit. Sincerely, your heart. 
Listen to your heart and don't let it quit on you. High blood pressure can lead to a stroke, heart attack, or death. Get yours to a healthy range today. For help keeping yours at a healthy range, text PRESSURE to 97779. A message from the American Heart Association, the American Stroke Association, and the Ad Council. WWE superstar Alberto Del Rio. Take one. Behold the angry giant. Try it again, Alberto. Behold the angry giant. Perfect. Good luck tonight. Behold the angry giant. Yay! Read me another one, Dad. This is WWE superstar Alberto Del Rio. It only takes a moment to make a moment. Take time to be a dad today. Visit fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. It may be hard to believe, but people just like you are already saving money. FeedThePig.org makes it easy. Their simple savings plan teaches you how to start saving without going overboard. So you don't need to sell all your belongings and live in a commune. These dungarees belong to all of us now, Tom. You don't need to get a second job as a stuntman. We need a new stuntman! You just need FeedThePig.org. Don't get left behind. Get tips and tools at FeedThePig.org. Brought to you by the American Institute of CPAs and the Ad Council. This is Mario Andretti. You know me as a race car driver. But I'm also a Meals on Wheels volunteer. I've raced against the sport's biggest personalities, but I've never met more vibrant, amazing people than the seniors served by Meals on Wheels. You can make a difference by dropping off a hot meal and saying a quick hello. So, America, let's do lunch. Volunteer your lunch break at americaletsdolunch.org. This message brought to you by Meals on Wheels America and the Ad Council. People been saying to your friend, get a different face. And posting on their feed, they're super ugly. The things they say to them online are cruel and they're not true. So tell your friend, I'll stand up for you. Don't worry, I know what to do. Know someone being bullied online? You can be a witness and make a difference by letting the world know it isn't cool. And by letting your friend know you care. Learn more at eyewitnessbullying.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council. Hope you enjoyed your meal. And I just want to say, he's lucky to have a brother like you. Lucky? Caring for my brother is far from easy. But he's a part of me, like my arms and legs, so I'll be his. No time for tired. Nothing can disable this love. He needs me, but I'm the lucky one, even though I need help now and then. If you're caring for a loved one, visit aarp.org slash caregiving for care guides and community. Support for your strength. Brought to you by AARP and the Ad Council. saying to your friend, get a different face. And posting on their feed, they're super ugly. The things they say to them online are cruel and they're not true. So tell your friend, I'll stand up for you. Don't worry, I know what to do. Know someone being bullied online? You can be a witness and make a difference by letting the world know it isn't cool. And by letting your friend know you care. Learn more at eyewitnessbullying.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council. Keyboard Cat, Hamilton the Pug, and Toast Meets World. These are some of the Internet's most beloved pets. And they all have one thing in common. Their stories started in a shelter. Start your story. Adopt a dog or cat today. Visit theshelterpetproject.org to find a pet near you. Training that pet to play the keyboard, that's optional. Start a story. Adopt a shelter or rescue pet today. Brought to you by Maddie's Fund, the Humane Society of the United States, and the Ad Council. Allison is perfect. I mean, she'd never tell you that. She's humble and perfect. She likes everyone. She even likes her untidy roommate's weird guinea pig. Allison, wait, are you texting and driving? Allison, no. That's the exact opposite of what I was just saying about you. Why, Allison? Why? Texting and driving makes good people look bad. Visit StopTextStopRex.org. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. We are live outside the home of Joe and Rosie Goddard, where a pretty big tickle fight broke out just minutes ago. Sources say their father instigated the laughter. Let's go inside for a comment. (laughs) Apparently, they have no comment. Dads... Let this be a reminder that it only takes a moment to make a moment. Call 877-4DAD411 or visit fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. The Journey Podcast is brought to you by Tascam and 
Amazon Studio. For more than 30 years, Tascam has developed products for every segment of the sound and music industry. From the high-end audio professional in a major post-production studio to the novice of hobbyist at home, Tascam is everywhere. They are a company committed to providing their customers audio and video solutions that enable breakthroughs by using sound in ways that are exciting as they are accessible, even recording the voices of the dead. You ask for a non-scripted paranormal TV show. You begged for a non-stage paranormal TV show. You begged and you pleaded, and we have listened. We present to you Season 1 of The Paranormal Journey to the Unknown. It was released October 31st, 2017. In this series, we show you what it's like behind the scenes and conducting a real paranormal investigation. Join Gavin Kelly, Paul Purcell, and their special guest to seek out the existence of life after death by going to numerous haunted locations such as jails, hospitals, battlefields, and museums, collecting compelling evidence evidence by means of video, photography, and EVPs. In this season, the crew investigates the St. Albans Sanatorium, Old South Pittsburgh Hospital, Jailhouse Pizza, and the famed Monroe House. And you can watch season one of The Paranormal Journey into the Unknown on Amazon.com right now. Season two and three will be coming soon. All right, and welcome back to the Fantastic Journey Podcast. We're coming to you live from the PGH Studios. Syndication is brought to you in part by WCJT Radio Live and Live 365. We are joined tonight with our special guest, Dalton Jones. Uh, he is the founder of the Southern Souls Paranormal. And, of course, he has successfully uh, blessed and cleansed a home for a family experiencing a demonic infestation. We're going to bring him back online here. We'd like to find out a little bit more about how he went about doing the blessing and how he cleansed a home to let this family be rid of a demonic infestation. Let's bring him back on. Dalton? Hey. Hey, man. How you doing? I'm doing good. All right. The question on everybody's mind is, how did you go about doing a blessing, and how did you cleanse this house for this family that was experiencing a demonic infestation? Well, the cleansing was left to the medium. Um, she used holy oil and holy water um, during the cleansing, and she cleansed the property. She uh, she cleansed outside before we did the inside, so... Um, pretty much what that's going to do is not going to allow anything else onto the property. Now, whenever I did the blessing, I used pretty much a script that was sent to me from a religious website or a religious church through their website um, that I contacted them about it, and they sent it to me. Um, I wish I could remember what the name of the church was, but I don't. Um, but anyway, I went to the house. I read that. Um, I anointed every door and every entrance um, in every room with holy water, all the walls and everything. I anointed it with holy water. And, uh, you know, I said some prayers and stuff like that. And um, during about halfway through, like I said earlier, that was whenever I got the growl. I heard the growl. Mm -hmm. And uh, that did chills down my spine, but it didn't scare me, per se. Um, you know, because you don't you don't want to show fear. So right. I didn't. Um, but... During that time, that uh, it kind of freaked me out, but I continued on and kept pushing forward. And uh, after that, you know, the rest is um, pretty much history now. So after that, everything was everything was great. The uh, atmosphere was more positive and more, uh, I guess, lighter. I guess you could say the air was was not as heavy. Right. The atmosphere wasn't heavy. And uh, it was just a, a completely different home. And like I said earlier, the animals that were there, the two dogs, they were they acted completely different. Um, the next day, I contacted them because they told me that recently, or they told me that night, that the dogs would never sleep in the master bedroom. Mm -hmm. They would always sleep in the living room. Well, I called them the next day. I'm like, how did y'all sleep? And they said they slept great. They told me about the dogs, and I'm like, well, that right there amazes me and I was ecstatic to know that I was actually able to help them and even today you know they still they still experience some activity but it's not negative right so it's you know it's some stuff that's kind of moving some stuff like that and uh which is you know generally what we encounter and their home is is still a hot spot but um the first investigation we did 
we didn't we, we got very little evidence um you know my my uh my attacks uh, the groping was not documented um i had it written down but it wasn't recorded or anything um but uh anyway um i knew what they were experiencing and i knew that there was something negative there and uh i don't forgot where i'm going with this but uh, <laughs> pretty much uh it was like i said earlier it was just a completely different home completely different atmosphere and now it's just a hot spot for your normal spirits and uh mm-hmm. you know i'll go over there every now and then they're like hey you want to do a little investigation yeah and, uh, you know, like I said earlier, they actually joined the team after that investigation, after we got rid of that, that demon. Um, we do know the, de- the name of the demon, but uh, I don't know if, if there's some people on here that don't want to hear the name. Um, some people are superstitious like that, so I'm not going to say it unless y'all say it's okay. Well, usually if you, you recite a demon's name, you usually cause a manifestation of it. Yeah. So I don't I don't see a whole lot. Um, usually after I say it, I'm, I'm, I cleanse or cleanse myself. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, basically what you're doing, if you go ahead and say the name, you're just basically saying, Hey, come on over. It's kind of like giving a vampire the word yes or enter. So yeah, I, I understand that. We definitely don't want to do that. Yeah. Yeah. I understand that. Um, so anyway, um, you know, it was just, it was completely different. And like I said, I was ecstatic to hear that. Mm-hmm. And, and for that to be successful, that was something bigger than me that I could conquer. And I conquered it very well. So that's opened up some, uh, some opportunities for me with some other investigations. Um, some other investigations have come out of, uh, woodwork, um, per se. Um, but, uh, these things come in threes from what I've heard. And I've got yeah. two more. I'm marching on now um, that are uh, in South Alabama. So, who knows? Well, my question is, since you went ahead and did the, the blessing and the, and the cleansing of the home, does that tie into um, or kind of calls it demonology, or is that something completely off base on that? I mean, um. The way I explain that, um, and I had to explain it earlier to somebody, was that anybody can do a blessing. You just got to have, you, you've got to have some Jesus, pretty much. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you be up in your faith, and you know, you, you've got to know what you're doing, and you've got to, you know, believe that that you can do this. Believing is everything. Right. Um, you know, having that having that. Um, what's the word that I'm looking for? Um, I said it earlier. Yeah, having that faith is is what uh, really helps. Mm-hmm. Without faith, you don't have anything. That's Without right. faith, you're just going to make it worse. Yeah, and the thing is, I bet you that you really have to truly, wholeheartedly have to have faith, not just superficially so you can cleanse this house. You have to have it wholeheartedly because I'm sure the evil entity can actually tell if you're bullshitting it. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. There's no doubt about that, and I agree with you 110%. Um, but, yeah, I mean, you, you do have to be true to your faith and, mm-hmm. and, you know, believe. Have faith. That's the main thing, you know. But if, you, if you've got faith, you can do anything. I mean, right. you can do all things, all things through Christ. So, yeah. you know, it, it ties into that. So what kind of um, protection do you um bring with you i mean do you guys do uh an opening prayer before you go into location and then you do a closing prayer when you leave um do you carry any articles of like uh saint michael's uh saint benedict's uh stones or anything like that i mean what what do, what do you do for protection we use the saint michael's prayer to begin with and then afterwards we just we kind of say you know, what's in our hearts, you know, thank you, Lord, for protecting us. Thank mm-hmm. you for watching over us. Um, thank you for giving us your shield and your armor to protect us as we, you know, go about your work. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, that that's that's just something off the top of my head. But, you know, we usually end it with a prayer that's, you know, custom pretty much. Um, it, it, it's just dependent on the case. Um, but, uh, yeah, we, we do we do have uh, our, our protection. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, 
now just kind of curious about that we usually ask what uh, everybody uses for protection i mean for us i wear the saint uh, benedict's ring and i also have a medallion around my neck that has all of the archangels so okay yeah and of course i have a pocket full of yeah. stones <laughs> I'm uh I'm looking I, I'm I'm probably gonna get a uh, blessed rosary. There you go. Um, pretty soon. There you go. Uh, uh, Saint Michael's or the Saint Benedict medal on there is probably gonna have both of them actually. Oh yeah, yeah. Huh. Um, let's see. What would what would you say would be the most uh, memorable experience that you had since you've been. Uh, doing the paranormal i'm kind of guessing the one that you did the blessing and the cleansing would be the most memorable but i'm talking about like something other than that like the best evp that you got at a location or the best experience that you gained at a location well we've uh we've got some really good evps that um you know the not all of them are great but uh, i do have some favorites um one of the ones that we recorded back in, I believe, July of 2016 um, was an EVP that said, get out of my house or I'll kill you. Oh, wow. So that's on our page. Um, now, to begin with, you know, I, I still to this day think it says something more nice, and I think it's purposely like that. Um, to begin with, I thought it said, my mama loves you. Mm-hmm. Well, that was just, I'm sitting there thinking, oh, well, how sweet. Well, I, I send it to another team member. I'm like, hey, listen to this. And like, it says get out of my house or I'll kill you. And I send it to another team member, and they say the same thing. And I send it to several people, and they're like, it, they're, they're saying it's all saying the same thing. And I'm like, well, darn. Um, uh, well, okay. Um, I don't feel very comfortable going back there. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I don't want to be well, <laughs> which, I mean, but that's not that's not too big of a concern for me. I mean. I've got my protection, mm-hmm. so, you know, it's, it's it's just not a huge concern for me. Now, you know, if I didn't have that protection, then I would be a little bit more concerned. Yeah. But uh, to get an EV like that was uh, very, I guess the word would be uh, concerning. Oh, yeah. And or you, off-putting. And you definitely don't want to show any fear from it either because it'll feed off yeah. of that. Um, another one we got, I recorded back in... September or October of 2018, which said, uh, I asked the question, what is your name? Mm-hmm. And it said, my name's Frankie. I mean, clear as day, my name's Frankie. I'm just like, dang. Now, here's the thing. It, uh, it said its name before I asked the question. Huh. That's interesting. Cause that, basically, it knew what you were about to say. What, Ouch. Yeah. Which, you know, I, I, I actually used to have a piece of paper that uh, had a bunch of questions written on it. Um, so that way I'm not sitting there for 30 seconds debating on which question I should ask. I just go down the list. Mm-hmm. Um, and that works great. I've, I've got to find that piece of paper. But uh, I use that, or I used to, until I lost it. But I can always make another one. But uh, Or, or yeah, you could actually uh, get an app, the AEVPS, by Paratools. That basically is almost the same thing. You just go in there and click on what questions you want it to ask, and it'll ask it in the form of a a little boy child, a little girl child, a middle-aged man, middle-aged woman, old man, old woman, young man, young woman, which is kind of cool. So you can actually just click on what you want to ask and just put your recorder next to it and walk off. Yeah, I, I might actually download that. It works great. I mean, we've used it a couple times, and uh, we use it over at the Monroe House, and one of them asked, I mean, we normally do not ask this question, but the AEVPS decided to ask and said, how did you die? And all of a sudden, we got murder. So, I mean, that was cool. But that's just a question that we do not like to ask. I mean, I'm sure they don't want to hear, how did you die? Yeah. So. Now, we we have occasionally occasionally if we believe that we're talking to a spirit that um died of some traumatic way we'll, we'll ask and just to see if you know if that's uh if that's really who we're talking to or if we're talking to a different spirit but uh right yeah <laughs> oh man 
we've uh, we've got another one that um, my my co lead investigator Jessica um, she asks uh, she, I can't remember what she asked oh she said uh, this is your time to talk you want to say anything and then about three seconds later the EVP says if that <laughs> and I'm like whoa nice. Yeah, just some I mean, things you don't want to hear. Yeah, we've uh, I mean, we've got some 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 good ones, and then we've got some okay ones, and we've got some that you can kind of barely hear. But now that I've kind of gotten to where I know how to enhance them a lot better, to where used to I didn't. Um, yeah. You know, I can I can I can make a a barely you know intelligible EVP sound a whole lot better. Um, but I still don't like editing them too much because I don't like distorting them or anything like that. I like to keep them kind of as raw as I can. Right. Um, you know, if if you can understand what it's saying, then I'm not going to edit it. But uh, you know, if it's if it's kind of deep in there and I got to do some editing, you kind of enhance it and cut out the background noise. And you know, I will I'll do that. But you know, other than that, you know, that's all I really ever use is the uh, uh, to remove the background noise. What are you using for the Audigy? Uh, Audacity. But, well, yeah, that's what I call it. Audigy. I, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm having trouble I with words you told, tonight. <laughs> I thought you were talking about software. Yeah, Audacity. Oh, man, I can't believe you had the Audacity. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, no, I, I actually used Audacity for a while, but then... Uh, I wound up going to audition because uh, Adobe is one of our huge sponsors for the show, and I've gotten access to audition. I love audition because all the things that you can actually do to it. Um, the whole intro of this show was all done on audition, which is kind of cool. Okay. Yeah, you hear all those radio sounds and everything. That's just all mixing and mastering and just adding filters here and there. Oh yeah, you can like oh. bend waves. Really cool. So, uh, let's see. My other counterpart decided to walk off, and she normally asks these other questions. So, I guess um, I'm gonna have to ask it, but I gotta remember exactly what it was. Usually, I'm uh, working on other things when she's doing her questions. So, yeah, let's try to figure this one out for me. Um. What would you say would be your best uh, three locations that that you've done? If you could just pick three. Uh, man. Um, <laughs> That's hard, huh? Yeah, that, that is. I mean, really, I can only pick two because the rest are just, um, they're all kind of tied. But, you know, I, well, yeah, I, I can pick three. I can pick three. Um the obviously the first one is going to be the one where I did the blessing because after that we were getting so many responses with with different spirits that it was just absolutely crazy. Right. And with the PSB PSB eleven, I mean we were getting response after response after response, and um, we got clear responses too. Jessica asked, "How old are you?" and it said, uh, 14. Huh. And I mean just immediately. Um. Uh. And then some people thought it said 32, which I'm one of the people that think it said 32. But she's like, yeah, hey, it says 14. Okay, you're right, whatever. Yeah, uh, ha- have you no- I, noticed I that? Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, <laughs> that one, then there's another one in North Alabama that um, was, uh, was a good one mm-hmm. um, that had uh, the EVP where it says, my name's Frankie. Uh, that was a good one. Right. Uh, let's see. Uh, well, the one thing is with the, the with the SB seven or or the SB eleven, you do know that most of that stuff is quote unquote uh, power of suggestion. One person hears something, yeah. the other person hears something, next person hears something. I mean, it's just it really depends on what you're actually hearing. We've had one EVP where it came came on through, and I'm like, I know what it said. To me, it's saying my name. Then somebody else listened to it, and they said, no, it says, play with me. And I'm like, how do you get play with me from Gavin? And then other people <laughs> were coming up with different things. So it's like, basically, it, it's, it's a power of suggestion. It's kind of like a spinning the roulette wheel of uh, something being said verbally. Yeah, and, you know, I had something that I thought said my name, too, but it turned out it was 
something completely different. I don't remember what it actually said, but it's on my page. I'd have to look at it later. But uh, mm-hmm. it uh, all it said my name. Yeah, that's crazy when it happens. Yeah. Um, well, here's a question for you. Started. Not to kind of uh, yeah. jump around a tangent here, but here's a question for you. See if you can figure this one out for me. Spirits don't have a brain. How do they hold memories? Like, how can they actually remember something? And the reason why I'm bringing this up is because we were at Waverly Hills a long time ago. We're talking uh, 20, I want to say 2015. We were at Waverly Hills. I walked into the morgue, and my name came across the SB7 um, in the morgue. Uh, there was an investigator asking, he goes, what room are we in? And I said, Mark. And he's like, all right, cool. And right when I walked through the door, I said, Gavin. And he's like, dude, it said your name. That was 2015, okay? April 4th, this year, we went back. I got into the body drawer. I'm using this device called Speculo, which is an app put out by uh, Brian Holloway in, in the United Kingdom. And I basically turned the sucker on, and I said, all right, what room are we in? It said, morgue. I'm like, all right, awesome. I go, I was here many years ago. I walked through that threshold, and you said my name. Do you remember my name? And it said, Gavin. How on earth can a spirit withhold, or act not withhold, but actually hold memory if it's just... Energy. I, I'm trying to figure that one out. I, I can't wrap my brain around that. How would they be able to remember? What do you think of that? Well, I've actually, believe it or not, I've actually thought of the same thing. And the only thing that I can think is it's just focused energy. I mean, that's that's the only thing that I can think of. I mean, that may make sense to some people, but some people it may not. But mm-hmm. How... that's, not, that's the only thing that I can use to explain it. Yeah, how about when uh, you're asking the spirit um, something about what did what did what was that one? Remember how somebody asked something about smell? It's like, did you smell that or something like or something like that? And and I believe the spirit came back and said, "Yes, I smell it." How on earth does a spirit ha- can smell something when it ain't got a nose? So first, it ain't got a brain, and it ain't got a nose. I mean, that's the nervous system that controls those types of things in a human. How in the world does that work with someone on the the, uh, interdimensional infant plane, or whatever they call it, which is basically our our, uh, separate parallel, or whatever, parallel dimension is what I'm thinking. That's what I'm trying to figure out. I'm sorry, what was that? That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm trying to figure out. I kind of came to a conclusion what it is, is when you're alive, all of your memories and everything are getting downloaded into, no, it's going to sound weird, but this is my theory of it. And some people actually kind of agree with the theory, but the human body is kind of like a computer. All your memories are actually getting packed down into your soul. Now, your soul is, quote unquote, made of energy. So, all the information that goes to your brain, which is the computer, downloads to your soul, which is the hard drive. So, I'm assuming when you pass on, the body's dead, but the soul lives on, that's where your memories are because it was downloaded from the brain. Yeah, I mean, that that could be possible. I mean, that sounds, I mean... Feasible? Sounds like that would be I mean, yeah, feasible. It's just the part about smelling. How in the world can they smell when they have no nose? That one throws me yep. for a loop. <laughs> or, or how can they knock if they don't have hands? I mean, you know, well, uh, how can they? True. How can they hear your question if you don't have if they don't have ears? I mean, are yeah. they all just crazy? <laughs> yeah. and, and how can they make footsteps with no feet? Yep, exactly. So, I mean, are we all just crazy and we need to go to some type of psych ward? I don't know. Possibly. <laughs> well, one thing I told, uh, usually I'll tell our class when we do Ghostology 101, we would be in a library giving our seminar of Ghostology 101, and I basically explain it this way. We are here in our time, 
But you have to remember, this place was not always here. There was probably somebody else's house here. Maybe a church. Maybe a business. We don't know what was actually here many years ago. The deal is, those people during that era are actually still here. So, say like this library was actually a big plantation house. While we are actually in the library, the people that lived in the plantation house are still there too. So they're kind of coinciding with us. They're actually they can see us. We just can't see them. But they're just going out, going on their daily routines, doing whatever they do. And sometimes that's the reason why we actually hear the footsteps, we hear the the, the breathing, and all that stuff. But we have to like kind of be in tune to it. I mean, you're in a library. You're not going to think anything's going to be haunted, definitely. And, and it won't even go across your mind unless someone says, you know, this place is haunted. Then you'll start freaking out or your uh, your senses will pick up something that will be happening within the library. But if you don't know that, you're not really going to pick up on anything. Yeah, I agree. So that's just one of the things. Okay, go back to your uh, your three locations. I'll shut up now. Um, and, uh, my third one, I can't think of where it's at. Okay. Um, uh, it's, it's somewhere in North Alabama, but, uh, we actually asked the spirit to, uh, move the REM pod to, uh, see if they could slide it across the floor because they moved a candle. Uh-huh. And, uh, but, uh, we asked, hey, can you move this across the floor? Well, next thing we know, the REM pod starts going off. Right. And uh, that that kind of blew me away, and I'm sitting there thinking, "Wow, this thing that we're dealing with is intelligent, and you know it's doing what we ask." So we're like, "Come on, push it!" And next thing we know, we hear the the beeps and everything, and uh, the it, it was just I don't know. It was it's something that I'm not going to forget. And uh, at that time, there's some people that that don't believe in orbs and I'm not a huge believer in orbs either. Me either. Uh, I think most of dust and, and bugs, but yep. um, at that time there was an orb that came out of the REM pod. Huh. Oh, but, but now that could just be dust. I mean, who knows? I mean, it, and it probably is, but I just kind of thought that was weird. But it came um, out of the REM pod. Yeah. So you're assuming I mean, it, your it, REM pod's it, not dusty. It, it, no, uh I mean, I keep, I keep it in a case. Let's see. Um, you might got something. But, yeah, I mean, it was flashing. I mean, it had its own energy source or uh, light. So, who knows? Right. Possibility. I mean, there's not any dust on the rim pod, and usually all the dust is around it, but this sucker came out of it. So, there's a good possibility. Yeah, and I mean, it, it, even even then, even with that, I'm still going to consider it dust because, like I said, I'm a huge skeptic in, in orbs and stuff like that. So, you know, well, I'm going to call it. The only way you can actually uh, differentiate if it's a real quote-unquote orb is if you have a regular camera that can't see in the dark. And if you're filming along... See, this is the thing you might want to try. Um, you get like a, a bracket... You put a regular camera, digital camcorder on it that can't see in the dark. So there is no night vision built in. And next to it, you have maybe a full spectrum or an IR camera camcorder. So you've got regular and IR. And you run them both at the same time. The deal is, if the regular one picks up something because it has its own luminous, then that is an orb. Otherwise, it will be dust, bugs, or this and that. Because, I mean, the orb supposedly can have its own illuminous, so it will light up. And if that regular one catches it, then you got yourself an orb. Yep. And uh, we, we've actually that, did that. Uh, yep. That's actually a good idea, and I might actually do that. Yep. Because, uh, I mean, that's really the only way to do it. Um, that's how one reason why we, uh, Paula started taking pictures without the flash. And we did this at a place called, uh, well, we call it 5050. And we actually captured what looks like the silhouette of a person walking up the stairs. And it was oh, wow. just 
pitch darkness. No flash, no nothing. She just snapped it, and you can actually see this, this, the profile, the silhouette of this person walking up the stairs. Hmm. Where is that That's picture, by the way? You know? It's, well, it's on the old Facebook page, but I don't know if it still is or not. On the old Facebook page? Wasn't it in the episode, too? On the old footage? Yeah. I thought that got pulled. No, they're not pulled. They're just buried. hidden. They're buried. Yeah. Yeah, that we uh, we actually encountered that when we had our first uh, show with an independent network. It was called the Fantastic Ghost Hunters. We had 13 episodes on their network, and that was one of the locations. We called it Divorce or Die because at that particular location, the husband either A, divorces the wife, he either leaves or he gets killed there. Or dies of an, uncon- un- of an unknown, like a heart attack, a stroke. An aneurysm. Something happens to the male. There you go. Crazy place. We actually captured a shadow moving our camera. And it was frame by frame that we actually saw it. Um, we saw a face that came out of the uh, the Kinect camera. Something shut off the generator. There was just some weird stuff going on there, wasn't there? There was all different kinds of things. And I had stuff going on in the barn, too. While we were what was there. going on in the barn? I don't remember. Oh, we had some... I slept since then. Oh, I, we had some, like, noises, unexplained noises going on in the barn while we were all out there. Don't talk to me. Talk to the microphone. We had unexplained noises <laughs> in the barn. Oh, my God. Oh. So, you remember your question you're going to ask? Nope. You're just out of it today. Wow. All right. So, but that was kind of crazy. Yeah, it sounds like it. I mean, I'd actually like to see that photo. I got to try to find it. As soon as I find it, I will let you see it. We have captured some crazy stuff in photos. I mean, one of the other ones, have you ever been to the Walden Manor? I have not. Oh, man. There's a little girl there named Maggie that runs around, and we actually heard a, a bang or something. There was a noise, and Paula just started snapping pictures. And... It was a flash this time, because you really couldn't see where the hell you were going there. It, I mean, it was just pitch dark, and they basically use it as a the, the sinister. What is that? A home sinister, sinister, sin on sinister. Or, they call it. They make it into a haunted house, a haunted attraction. Um, and there was just a lot of stuff all there, so you have to really watch where you're walking away. You're gonna trip on something. But she snapped this picture, and I didn't think anything of it. We're going through all the pictures and stuff, and. If you see it, you will see it looks like there's a little girl. You can see her hair, her face, her body. She's wearing a nightgown. There is this creature in the center that has his arm around her, and then he has his arm around what appears to be a little boy. Hmm. Yeah. It freaks everybody out when we're doing our seminar. Because I pop that sucker up, and they're like, they're like, <gasps> they gasp like nobody's business. I have to let you see it. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to. That was amazing. I mean, seeing stuff like that. Now, uh, the uh, we've talked a lot about this demon, but not about the skinwalker. So, uh, yeah, t- tell me about skinwalkers. Yeah, um, we uh, originally we didn't. You know, we we didn't know it was a skinwalker, but after further research, we have a uh, a pagan on our team, okay. Walker. Mm-hmm. He's uh he he knows all about him. I, I was telling him about it, and you know, he's like, "Eh, it sounds like it might be a skinwalker." But during the investigation, um, this is another place that you know I can't really say if I was attacked, and this is why I didn't mention it earlier, okay. um, because you know it could just be coincidence. Right. But uh, I, I stepped on a nail and it mm. went into my foot. Ouch. Yeah, it uh it went about a, a third of an inch deep into my foot. And the weird part about it is, is I didn't bleed. Oh, wow. I didn't bleed. Um, now I'm in there in the medium channels, and she she channels the spirit, and, you know, the spirit's laughing whenever I'm talking about my my injury. Mm-hmm. I'm sitting there, I'm, I'm wearing boots, cowboy boots, and I'm sitting there, I'm, trying to pull this nail out of my foot and I can just feel the skin start 
start coming with the nail. Mm. And it's just pulling against it. And uh, finally, I just I grab a hold of it and I just jerk it out. Mm. Well, I pull my shoe off and I look and I'm like, well, there ain't no blood. So the weird part of it is, weird part about it is, is I had a uh, a car wreck where I hit an 18 wheeler um, in the double axle, so where the two wheels meet, and uh, hit that. Ended up uh, having a blood clot in my lung from a fractured rib, and uh, I was on blood thinners. Well, it was kind of weird how I wasn't bleeding if I was on blood thinners. So I, I guess it just missed all the veins and, and, and stuff like that whenever it went to my foot. That's the only thing I can think of. Uh, or it could be a warning. Yeah. Um, but uh, whenever we took a break, this was after I stepped on the nail, we ended up taking a break uh, after about uh, midway through the investigation. Me and Jessica, were standing outside, and we're talking, and we're on Facebook Live and everything, and we hear this knock on a tree that's, like, loud. I mean, it's like something takes a, a limb and just... Pow! Mm-hmm. Just right on the side of it, and then the next thing we hear is we hear this ungodly screech. And I'm sitting there, I'm thinking that's got to be a screech owl. But then Jessica's like, the screech owl doesn't sound like that. So it actually sent chills down my spine, and I'm freaking out because I'm like, what was that? Um, and uh, it's just it's something that I've never heard before, and it's something that I don't ever want to hear again. And I told Walker about the sound. And He's like, did it sound anything like this? And sent me a link to YouTube, and I'm like, yes, it sounded just like that. He's like, that's a skinwalker. Or a banshee. I'm like, well, yeah, yeah, either one. Um, and uh, the weird part about it is, is that they had chickens turn up mutilated. Hmm. Like their head was off, they were ripped apart. Oh, wow. Um, and the same thing with a dog as well. And uh, it was... Uh, it wasn't, yeah, I, I don't know, could it be a skinwalker? Possibly. Could it be a banshee? Possibly. Um, but uh, I, I don't know. But it was it was something that really freaked me out. And the weird part about it is that on the audio uh, of the live feed that we were doing, the live, the Facebook live, we, uh, we couldn't hear it. Huh. Well, you can hear it, but it's very, it's very low. You can hear it. You can definitely hear the knock. You can mm-hmm. hear the loud knock. It's, it's uh, you know, it's it's uh, pretty loud. So it, it came through on the audio, but the screech um, didn't come through so loud. Um, and it sounded to us like it was about a uh, seventy-five hundred yards away from us. Oh wow! Hmm. So it was uh, it was something that really freaked me out. Usually, from what I've but, understood about Skinwalker, it has tie in with Native Americans and yep. it's something that turns into a dog of some sort or a dog yep. turns into um, an Indian yep um, that, that's that's what I've heard too and the weird part about it is is this is in Tennessee and uh, that is weird. this was where the Trail of Tears went through I mean yeah part of the Trail of Tears rather um part of it but also there was a this was pretty close to shallow national park oh okay battlefield so it's uh it's got a got a little bit of history behind it so you know could it be a skinwalker yeah but uh we're gonna be going back hopefully pretty soon i don't know when but uh hopefully soon and uh actually investigate it but uh yeah hmm okay so let me know Uh, about that because usually skinwalkers are in the area of Mexico and New Mexico, mm-hmm. or Nevada. Yeah, that's what I've heard too. That's exactly what I've heard. But uh, and and usually they're Navajo. Yeah. Um, but who knows? I mean, but it, it also could be a banshee. We we could be looking at things the wrong way. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it, it it has some of the characteristics of a banshee. Now the homeowner said that she saw glowing golden or yellow eyes. Oh, in wow. her backyard. Now, that uh, would freak me out to see that. I'd run back in the house, lock the door, yeah. and barricade myself. I mean, I'm not, I'm not into cryptozoology or anything, mm-hmm. and you know, I would kind of consider a skinwalker kind of cryptozoology. Right. So, 
the kind of stuff kind of it, it freaks me out a little bit because you know the whole skinwalker and the uh uh what's it called the uh what, it's in mexico the uh crap um the only thing i know of is skinwalkers is there something else yeah it's uh, yeah the uh man the goat the it's called the goat sucker or the blood sucker or something like that Oh, um, I've heard that one. It's uh, I'm I'm sure you've heard of it, but hang on, uh, I'm gonna see if I can think of it. Probably a different word for it. Oh, oh yeah, the chupacabra. Oh, the chupacabra. Yeah, you gotta yeah. Say, you gotta put the bra in there, chupacabra. Yeah, I got I, that. I, could, I can't roll my R's. <laughs> I got that from Supernatural. <laughs> <laughs> I, I couldn't do it. Yeah, chupacabra. I'd not, but, uh, yeah, stuff like that, and uh, Bigfoot, and, and you know. Um, I'm not a big believer in uh, Bigfoot. <laughs> Join the club. What are, well, well, here's the thing. If if Bigfoot doesn't exist, then what the heck are people seeing? I mean, there, there's a lot of people that are actually seeing this big, tall creature that looks like a man, and it's walking. I mean, what, what could it possibly be? Chewbacca. <laughs> oh man! I'm, I, I don't. I don't know. And and the reason why I say that is because I saw a, a post on Facebook that had Chupacabra in one of the uh, pretty well known pictures of Bigfoot. Um, uh-huh. It was him in there with his uh, little uh, not his vest, but his uh, I can't think of what it's called. The thing that goes over his shoulder. But uh, anyway, yeah, I, I saw that, and that's what made me think about it. But uh, yeah, I just I'm not a big believer in Bigfoot. I just I don't see any really hardcore evidence of it. I mean, yeah. I just don't. Yeah, usually it's uh, it's the prints that they always have, or it's uh, a picture that's like way off in the distance. I mean, there was one that was yep. kind of very peculiar to me. I was watching uh, the new show that uh, Brian Cano put out. It's Paranormal Caught on Camera, something like that, on Travel Channel. Yeah. There was a video that showed these guys, they were mountain climbing. They were at the top of this mountain, and they're looking down and way off. We're talking at least, they're, they're zooming in at least maybe 150 times on their camera, and they see something upright, walking, and, I mean, it is moving through the snow, and it's basically no human could actually do what it was doing, and it was actually going up the mountain. This is not really a path for someone to walk, and it was just making his way on up there like nobody's business, and it moved fast, but it was upright. And they zoomed in on it, and you can see it had it had a body, arms, and legs. No, there was no hike. It wasn't like a hiker. There was no bag, a backpack, or anything on this person. It was just weird, and it was moving fast. No human could move that fast. So I, I don't know. The only thing I could think of would be a bear. Upright. It was yeah, walking on two legs. Up yeah, they only. I got don't a... know about if they walk upright, but uh, they. I mean, I, I, I've seen videos of bear walking upright, but. Yeah, but they get I mean, on two feet when they were, when they're about to attack. Yeah, that's true. That is true. But they always walk on all fours. I mean, this thing was actually walking on both uh, feet. I have to, to find the video and then I'll I'll send it to you. You can check it out because I'm I'm still okay. on the fence with it. But who knows? It, it's a possibility because that's about the best evidence I have ever seen of quote unquote a Bigfoot. Because yeah, I mean, you I'm, can see it. I'm not a. Uh... I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. That's okay. Go ahead. Um, if anybody can can make me uh, a believer in Bigfoot, go ahead. I'm all for it. I mean, <laughs> you know, I'm not I'm not a closed minded skeptic. I'm open, mm-hmm. but uh, yeah, I mean, I'm open to uh, seeing you know some evidence and stuff like that. But you know, got to be pretty good for me to actually believe it. Oh, I know, right? So. We're almost to the end of the show here. Um, 
Go ahead and tell our listeners where they can find you, how they can uh, pull you up on the internet, um, if you have any events that you're going to be doing this year. You know, talk about a, a new show that you're uh, going to be in. You know, things like that. Yeah. Um, well, I, I guess I'll start first with the show. We're going to be on, on Gavin's show, uh, Truth of Legends in Your Hometown. We're really excited about that. Um, got some locations I need to send you, Gavin. Um, but uh, we also have an event coming up as well um, in uh, Kosciuszko, Mississippi. Good luck pronouncing that one. Oh, wow. I'll, um, I'll, I'll pass. <laughs> yeah, if I if I sent you the uh, the name of it, you'd be like Costesto, Costco, because I, at first I'm sitting there, I'm like Costco, Mississippi, <laughs> Costco, nope, Kosciuszko, but uh, yeah, it's investigating a funeral home. Oh wow! Which uh, not many people get to investigate because there's not many of them out there that um, people host investigations at, or at least that I've seen. Right. Um, uh, y'all can find us at uh, Southern Souls Paranormal on Facebook, and uh, I've got a public figure page, which I don't really do much on, but that's Dalton Jones SSP, and uh, we post a lot of evidence from our investigations. We've got some good evidence out there um, that a lot of our fans like, and uh, if you could give us a like, and uh, we'd greatly appreciate that. All right, man. Sounds good. Yeah, definitely go ahead and send me those uh, locations, and we'll talk about that later on. Okay. <clears throat> But man, I tell you what, we enjoyed having you on the show. Um, very, you. very oh. informative, and I hope uh, this does kind of give everybody a better idea about demons and how to do a blessing, cleansing a home, because you know there's all these different ways that, or different people that really kind of don't believe in this stuff. But you actually gave a good 100 percent. Uh, definition of how to do it and it really has nothing to do with you know being demonology anybody can actually do a blessing and a cleansing as long as they have the faith in God and once again like I stated earlier you can't be superficial you have to be wholeheartedly boom boom faith in God otherwise evil entity would be like hey you're bullshitting me I'm going to attack you So, but if you have 100% faith in God then You'll be safe, and you'll be able to take care of this. So I do appreciate you being on the show. We'll probably have you on the show uh, <laughs> next time. Uh, we'll talk about uh, things that went on for Truth and Legends. So I'm sure you guys are totally ecstatic for that. We are. We are. <laughs> the whole thing. All right. All right, man. Well, thanks for being on the show, and we will uh, talk to you later. Okay. All right. Thank you for having me. Hey, not a problem. Have a good one. All right, bye, All right. y'all. Bye-bye. All right, folks, there you have it. We've been talking to Dalton Jones, the founder of Southern Souls Paranormal. Uh, we have actually have a better understanding now of how he can bless and cleanse a home. It has really nothing to do with, quote-unquote, being involved with demonology. Anybody can actually bless and cleanse a home. As long as you have a heart, that is dedicated to God. With the help of Jesus and God, you'll be able to conquer all and do anything. Fist bump to the big man. All right. I'm going to go ahead and let you guys know we got a couple Paracons and events coming up for 2019. If you guys want to come out and see us, May 4th and 5th, we're going to be at the Parasitecon in Mansfield, Ohio. That will be inside the Ohio State Reformatory. May 10th and 11th, we will be at Haunted Con, which is Dog Patch USA. I don't know if any of you know what that is, but it's in Marble Falls, Arkansas. It's an actual haunted amusement park. June 28th to the 29th, we're going to have a Para Unity Conference in South Pittsburgh, Tennessee at Miss Old South Pittsburgh Hospital. Can't wait to go back there. We've been missing to go back there. We missed that place. Beautiful location, awesome experiences, great evidence. July 19th, we're going to be at the Farrar Beyond the Grave in Maxwell, Iowa at the Farrar Elementary School. July 26th to the 28th, we will be at the Gettysburg Battlefield Bash in Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania. 
Pennsylvania, PA. Hey, that's it. Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. There we go. Uh, this is going to be a great event. It's going for the Wounded Warriors of the Pennsylvania chapter. So all proceeds are going to be going to that awesome uh, benefit. So you guys want to come on out and check that out? There is a long list of guests. I can't really name them all off the top of my head because uh, I'll feel bad if I leave somebody out. But there is a long list of special guests. September 6th and 7th, we're going to be at the Silcon Convention in Mattoon, Illinois. And September 14th, we'll be closing out the year at Paracon 2019 in Van Buren, Arkansas. Don't miss our show next week, March 27th. We will be joined by Katrina Weidman from Paranormal State, Paranormal Lockdown, and now she is currently involved with Jack Osborne with Portals to Hell. I hope you all enjoyed the show. We will talk to you next week. Have a good one. Fantastic Journey Podcast is brought to you by Tascam and Amazon Studio. For more than 30 years, Tascam has developed products for every segment of the sound and music industry. From the high-end audio professional in a major post-production studio to the novice of hobbyists at home, Tascam is everywhere. They are a company committed to providing their customers audio and video solutions that enable breakthroughs by using sound in ways that are exciting as they are accessible, even recording the voices of the dead. You ask for a non-scripted paranormal TV show. You begged for a non-staged paranormal TV show. You begged and you pleaded, and we have listened. We present to you Season 1 of The Paranormal Journey to the Unknown. It was released October 31st, 2017. In this series, we show you what it's like behind the scenes and conducting a real paranormal investigation. Join Gavin Kelly, Paul Purcell, and their special guests to seek out the existence of life after death by going to numerous haunted locations such as jails, hospitals, battlefields, and museums, collecting compelling evidence by means of video, photography, and EVPs. In this season, the crew investigates the St. Albans Sanatorium, Old South Pittsburgh Hospital, Jailhouse Pizza, and the famed Monroe House. And you can watch season one of The Paranormal Journey into the Unknown on Amazon.com right now. Season two and three will be coming soon. Yeah.